Showdown is presented by the Yamaha DXR Series. Hey everybody, we are backstage at the Bridgestone in Nashville. I'm with, I'm with Tommy Thayer of KISS. Yeah, Tommy, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's great to be here. I mean, it's great to have you guys here um, well, in our little backyard. Yeah, yeah, a little backyard indeed. Man, um, I was reading about your signature amp and the charitable tie-in on that. First, tell me about the amp yeah. and tell me about the philanthropy that you sure. uh, tied into that. This is the Hughes & Kettner uh, Tommy Thayer signature duotone. Uh, I've done this amp for about eight years now and uh, Hughes & Kettner has done a fine job. They've been a great supporter and uh, obviously I, I love the amp a lot because I'm still playing it eight years later right. and, and haven't replaced it with something else. Now, when you started with KISS, were you on a Marshall at that point? Yeah, I think, well, I've been uh, uh, 12 years plus now, and, yeah. and uh, at first it was a Marshall, like a 900 yeah. series uh, amplifiers. But uh, these are great, and, and uh, it's just something, there's something sweet and, and, and really robust, but very ballsy about the way these sound, and I'm really, really happy. It's a two-channel amp. Uh, and I just mainly use the overdrive channel. Uh, and no effects. No effects, actually. Yeah. Uh, occasionally I might put a, uh, an effect into the loop. We were doing Christine 16 recently, so I had an octave divider that yeah. uh, my tech manually uh, operated for me yeah. during the guitar solo because there was an octave effect on the guitar yeah. solo. But other than that, uh, very little or no effects. and. Boy, that's great, man. That's always been more my uh, philosophy. It's been about keeping it really simple and you know, right down to the pure, basic essence of, of what I'm doing. Yeah, nowhere to hide. Just great yeah. guitar playing, man. Sure. That's, that's great. So, But these are great amps, and, and uh, you had asked about the charitable part. Uh, all the royalties that I make on these amps, I, I donate directly to the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. How great. Um, which is a... Uh, you know, it's a charitable cause I really believe in, and uh, you know, children's health and, and all that sort of thing is really yeah. important. So that's worked out good, and I've been able to give them the, the royalties, and, and so everybody's happy. How great, man. And are you running these into a, a what kind of cabinet do you do? You... Well, you know, we have these KISS custom cabinets. They're, they're 412s, much like a Marshall, but actually now on this tour, I, before I started the tour, I did some ABing and I'm actually using a couple Engel uh, cabinets up there right really? now. Really? Um, don't tell the guys in Hughes and Kentner, but uh, I am <laughs> they, using an, an Engel cabinet. They uh, might find out. We, they, we have uh, a guy on our, our, uh, our crew, he's actually my guitar tech, a former guitar tech. He works with Engel and uh, he convinced me that it uh, has a nice sound. And we A-beat him and it did sound good. So, huh. But it's, it's all about the Hughes and Kentners and I'm, I'm really super happy and, and you know, they're, they're great road dogs. They've, they've held up well and I've got a bunch of them. I use two of them. Uh, at, uh, at a time out here on the road, so. Loud and proud. Yeah, other than that, we just got, you know, the wireless units, we've got four channels here, and then a, a switcher to go between the, the channels. You know, basically I'm on number one almost the whole time. Mm -hmm. If there's an emergency, I'll go to number two, but I have my guitar strap with the pack. It's actually underneath my, my outfit. It's kind of woven in, yeah. so uh, I stick with the same strap and the same pack for the, almost the whole, well, for the whole show, actually, yeah. and so I'm on channel one. but. Other than that, it's it's uh, very very straight ahead. We just got you know tuners and things like that. So awesome. But, uh, we're just good to go. Yeah. Hey, well, let's talk about uh, let's talk about your guitars. Sure. Well, you know, maybe the first thing we'll talk about. I got a brand new couple new Les Pauls today from the Gibson Custom Shop. Oh, nice. This is uh, this is uh, a new one here. It's this is a metallic white. Uh, so you haven't even played it. You literally just got this. Just got it. First time in my hands right now, almost. But, uh, <laughs> I just tried it out, and so it's, you can see it's it's a beautiful metallic white, it's like an alpine white. Wow. With the three ply, uh, ply binding, so it's very kind of a little more subtle on the binding. I didn't want it to look too blocky. And then if you can, I don't know if you can see on camera, but all the parts are chrome, pickguard. How you know, cool. Everything. And uh, we just put this pickup in because I'm trying a new pickup today, so it's not supposed to be the the cream uh, open pickup like that because I was th I think I'm gonna cover it but uh, anyway that's why that looks like that right now but this is a guitar that's really cool and I'm looking forward to playing it on stage tonight that's very cool man yeah yeah that's great so did you pre-order it or was this something Gibson surprised you with when you arrived no I actually pre-ordered specifically you know I made a list of exactly what I wanted uh -huh. and they're so great that uh, 
you know, it takes a couple months to put them together, but I, you know, I told them specifically the paint, binding, all the parts, you know, everything about it, the neck, uh, you know, uh, feel and everything like that. Uh, well, wow, that's uh, great. Yeah, right Beautiful. down to all the details. So it's. Uh, Do you change guitars like every song or? Uh... Actually, I don't. Um, I could probably stick with one guitar the whole night. I'm not one of the guys that switches. I have to have a different guitar for every song. Yeah. It's, again, it's very simple, very straightforward, traditional approach. So if a guitar is staying in tune, I might use it for almost the whole set. It just it just depends. Yeah. But okay, if you want to hold that occasionally, yeah, though, um, I'll pull out the Explorer just for a different look. Um, this is a uh, Gibson Custom Shot. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Silver Sparkle Explorer, and I've had this five or six years now. I had a couple of them made by the Gibson Custom Shop, but it's... Well, it's, uh, let it's me hand this off. It's, it's a great... Uh, that makes me nervous. It's brand great, new. Great guitar. You know, it's a very, uh, 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 you know, kiss totally. looking guitar for, yeah. uh, for the stage. And uh, this, again, has all the chrome parts, and it's more of a silver sparkle, as you can see. So Is the uh, tone pretty similar to, uh, to your Les Pauls? You know, it's, they're similar. I think that uh, Explorers and from my uh, experience, Explorers and the Flying Vs and things like that, they have, they have a little more of a, a mid-range honk to them, which is nice. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and and SGs kind of go a little more that direction too. Sometimes, I mean, the Les Pauls seem to be a little more full-bodied. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, totally. Uh, and so it's a nice change sometimes because these things have a, a certain kind of honk to them that's really nice. Yeah, yeah, they really cut. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's, that, that's a cool thing. You've always been like a Les Paul guy. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, all going all the way back to, to black and blue and, you know, in the 80s and, and yeah. uh, I mean, I played Strat guitars a little bit here and there in the old days, but not anymore. I'm, I've always been a real Les Paul yeah. devotee. Yeah, yeah, it's a great fit, man. You sound, I mean, you, you sound great on them and it's, it's uh, and it's for this gig, it's just so iconic, you know. This is my uh, guitar that I've been using for the last couple of years. Um, as you can see, it's a Tobacco Sunburst, uh, custom shop standard. Um, oh. Great sounding guitar. I've been using it as my number one guitar on this tour, but I think we're going to get that white one in there now. Oh, um, beautiful. And I've just switched over a few weeks ago to these Seymour Duncan pickups. Hmm. I think they're JBs or something, aren't they? And uh, and I like the, 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 the open cream look. It's kind of cool. It's, yeah, it's classic. kind of classic. And great guitar. I'm, you know, this has been my number one. So we'll see how it goes tonight with the new one. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So is that a is that like a like a fifty nine reissue kind yeah, of? Yeah, it would be or? more of a fifty nine kind of thing. Reissue. Some of my older Les Pauls have more of the nineteen sixties profile neck, but yeah. this is more fifty nine, and that one's even the white one's even a little more so that way I too. Think so. Serial number is fifty seven. Yeah. So hmm. uh, anyway. I'm kind of like liking having a little more meat on the neck these days, to be honest with you. So yeah. So do you get any kind of hand fatigue with the bigger necks, or does it? No, I don't actually. I've got pr fairly good sized hands anyway, and and uh, yeah. I never had a problem with that kind of stuff at all. Huh. I. Uh, uh... <laughs> yeah. For those you of you watching at home, that's a bunch of girls yelling at Tommy. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. It's part perks, of the gig. Perks, perks of the road. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's uh, too cool, man. So that's uh, you know kind of that's the rundown. It's again, it's it's pretty straight ahead, and uh, yeah, less I ball. really you know I'm a traditionalist, and I I like to keep things simple, and and I think tone wise, uh, to me the best guitar sounds are when you plug a great guitar into a great amp, right, and and that gets you there without any other, uh, you know anything in between so right. to speak. So. Well, Tommy, you're a great player, man. I really appreciate you meeting with us oh. today and, you know, congrats and uh, have a great tour. My pleasure. It's great to have you guys here and I hope you enjoy the show tonight. We're oh, in yeah. Nashville, by the way. In Nashville. And, uh, That's right. It's going to be sold out and this place another hour or two is going to be packed. So you have a few people up there right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to get crazy. Okay. It's John Bolger. Peace out. Okay. We are, uh, we're with Gene Simmons Tech, Jason Lemire. This is Jason's last day on the gig. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Jason, let the uh, good people see your handsome face. There, hey. <laughs> Jason, tell me about this rig. Well, what, it's what the God of Thunder plays. It's we recently, in the last, I guess about six months ago, we completely redid the rig and changed it. We were using Ampeg, and 
it, they were just getting old and tired and they no longer make the amps that we were using. So it was time to kind of move on and, and to do something different, a little more modern. So it's still, you know, real simple. It's just a simple signal flow. It comes into the wireless, Sure Wireless. Then we go to the radial JD7 switcher. And then we're going to split the signal from there. So we're taking the direct out right into the Tech 21 Sans amp, which is, you know, our, that's a real gritty dirt tone mm. that basically just goes to Gene's ears, doesn't go anywhere in the house at all. Mm. So he's the only one that really hears that DI. They take a feed to the front of house, but it's real, real light in the house mix. And, and then, you know, from there, it's going to go from the direct, you know, out of the switcher into the compressor. So then uh, we're coming who, at... Okay, who makes this compressor? It's the Empress? Empress, yeah. So we're splitting the signal, you know, basically it's coming out, out of the switcher, the radial JD7, into the compressor. You know, the Empress compressor, which I said, like, basically just using it for sustain to add a little more sustain to the bases, mm -hmm. not so much squashing the signal. And it's just simply straight right into the new uh, Tech 21, their 1969 heads. It's a all solid state head, but it really, really has the sound of a tube amp. They've Ooh. really done a really good job of um, getting that tone that you always want with a tube. Right. But it's hard to get from solid state. Well, they've, I don't know what they've done, they figured out a way to get it. And so it's the real, reliability of the solid state. Yeah. You know, so I'm not gonna have to switch tubes. It's gonna sound the exact same every night. I don't have to let it warm up. I can literally turn this rig on, hit on, play it, and it's gonna sound the same the whole night. That's where, great. you know, a lot of times with the older amp pegs, it's gonna take, you know, I gotta turn it on an hour, two hours before the show. And then by the end of the show, because we drive it really hard, we drive the amps really hard, it, the tone has changed just because those tubes are so hot and the capacitor is so hot, it just doesn't sound as good. So that's it. The only other really thing that we do is we come out of the effect loop of the JD7 and we use the Strymon, um, their tape delay echo pedal for the Gene Solo. Oh, cool. Um, we've kind of gone back and forth. We've um, used other, we use a full tone tape delay and we kind of, depending on where we are, you know, we'll switch it back and forth, but we're, there's always something coming through the effects loop, which is a tape delay or a tape delay simulator for the solo when he does the God of Thunder. Now what kind of cabinets are you running into? Ampeg 8x10s, just and standard. They're amp. on stage? They're, they're up, yeah, up on stage. We fit, he's super, super loud, so we pointed backwards just to kind of cut the stage volume a little bit for how, the other guys. Many? Just one, we're running one. just one cab, one oh. main, one backup. So this rig is basically, that's all it really is. It's like, come out of the wireless, this is the main Sans amp, that's a backup. You know, this is the main head, that's a backup. So if one were, one were to fail, it's literally just, Take the plug out and really? go in. So it's it's a real simple rig. And you uh, you're handling the uh, the delay when yep. he's doing his solo. Yeah, it's just kind of a speeding up the tape and slowing it down. Oh, cool. You know, depending on what he's doing. Weird sounds. Yeah. So yeah. it's we try to make it as consistent every night, but it's there's never been two nights the same. Yeah. It's always different. Very cool. Kid, okay, tell me about this bad well, boy. Well, there's there, there's basically two styles of basses that Gene plays. The GS Axe Punisher. You know, he owns his company, and this is the main bass for the show. It's just a black Punisher with a white you know, the little white trim. And yeah. it's real simple. It's just two EMG active pickups just hardwired right to the volume knob. So we get rid of the pickup selector, we get rid of the input jack underneath, and I just hardwire, you know, so it's literally two pickups right to the volume knob. And so that's the main, main punisher does the meat of the show. And does the production model come with these eye hook? No, uh, the production model comes like, you know, the production models will come standard where all three pickups are active. There'll be a you know a pickup selector, and then and the input jack will be here, and then a tone knob here. Yep. But for Gene, it's just all we want is the loud growl, and the the less stuff for him to bang into, the better. Hmm. And that cover, he keeps it on there, huh? Keeps it on there, yeah. You know, yeah. you'll see he bangs these things and beats them up pretty good. And these, the reason they have the eye hooks is his strap is built into his costume, oh. and it's the quickest way to get the uh, base is off. I'll show you the strap. So yeah, so the, the strap will feed into his costume, so it'll be fed in through under his cape. So we literally use the same strap and oh. same cable every night. So we use these dog clips, collar clips. That's where they have the eye hooks, so you can get the bases in and out without having to move the strap. Very cool. And then we use the Neutrik, you know, noise canceling oh. um, jack, so when he yanks it out, it doesn't right. go kaboom! Yeah. You know, so it's good. Yeah, and those studs were forged in hell, right? Yeah, in yeah. hell, in hell. <laughs> so this is another one of his punishers. We do like a limited runs of these chrome. Sometimes it'll be silver like this, sometimes it'll be just gold. This specific bass was made for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame if we were gonna perform at it. Cool. But uh, all the politics that went there kept, kept that from happening. So this bass was specifically made to play if they did the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony. So now we just keep it in the vault and we'll 
we'll use it for somebody or somebody will buy it as a stage play. Yeah, you know, Gene very play, cool. Gene plays, you know, people can you know go to his website and purchase a stage play. From base. the show. Yeah. So So is he like one show and done? One show and done. Like I'll build it that morning, we'll build it that morning, and then um, they usually either get a punisher for the encore or an axe, the one he'll bleed on. You know, so we'll come off stage, you know, I'll put it to the side. The people will come get at the end of the show, Gene will autograph it to them, and then it's theirs. So it's kind of a neat thing. What do those sell for? I think they're 10 grand, right, right around there. Wow. And we usually do about one, if not every night, every other night. Wow. So we do a lot. <laughs> people like them. <laughs> so then this is the, the base that everybody always kind of equates with Gene. Iconic, man. Yeah, the, the GS Axe. But you can see this is one that, that's been modified. So it's, you know, there's, this would have been the pickup selector here. This would have been the tone knob. And then the input would be underneath here. That's where, how they come from the factory. But like yeah. I said before, we hardwire it and just let him go. You know, and it, with his costume, it doesn't work really to have the, the cable in the back. Yeah. It gets snagged on his boots. It gets snagged on his cod. So it's, you got to have the input in the front for him. So and that's, you know, that's the axe. And the same thing, it's got the dog clips, you know, to get it in and out. So this is, this is the base that will be covered in blood tonight. Very cool, man. There you have it. Hey, well, thanks so much for of your course, help, man. Of course, thank you. Yeah, hey, uh, best of luck on your new venture. Your thank post you very much. Kiss life. I know, it's going to be strange. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're here with Francis. This is Paul Stanley's Guitar Tech, longtime Guitar Tech. In fact, a man so famous, he has his own... Action figure. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of people can say that. No, no, you and a few pro wrestlers and Kiss. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Hey, man. Sit somewhere in between there, the pro wrestlers and Kiss. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, tell us about uh, Paul's favorite guitars. <laughs> Paul's here. guitars on this uh, 2014 Kiss Def Leppard tour are Washburn uh, PS 2012 Starfires. Uh, resembles the classic look of classic guitar he played back in the day yeah and uh, this would be his main guitar big metal flake uh, speedboat metal flake guitar uh, Seymour Duncan uh, custom 5 and a 59 in the neck and uh, it's pretty straight up solid piece of mahogany um, it's got this great classic looking tail piece which which really makes it ring nice wow it does yeah it's got a great these are great sounding guitars and uh, all the guitars are identical, same pickup configuration, same wood, uh, just different colors. Now, so this is, the this is his main guitar, which he plays the majority of the night. Now the production models, do they come with those same pickups or those? You know what? Uh, funny enough, these guitars started out with mini humbuckers. Oh, um, kind of like the Firebirds. Kind of like, like those classic guitars. And uh, we wanted to change the sound a little bit, and we and we started routing them for humbuckers. So I don't know if the custom shop even, I'm sure they make it if someone requested it. Yeah. But standard, standard on this uh, guitar is uh, mini humbuckers. Hmm, cool. So I guess you'd have to order from the custom shop with humbuckers, full size humbuckers. But yeah, all of his guitars are exactly the same. Awesome. Uh, so that's the main. This is a backup. Pretty similar, except that it's just black. And uh, can, you, uh, can you talk about this guy, or is that under wraps? Is that? Uh, uh, I can talk about it. I think um, it's not a secret. Um, Paul's contract with Washburn was up, and uh, he renewed his contract with Ibanez. So probably by the end of end of this year, beginning of next year, Nam will probably be the launch of Paul going back to the the what he's probably most known for, the PS10 model cool. is it called the iceman was that well the iceman is is the shape of the guitar this model is called a ps10 really the only difference is the iceman has uh two volumes and two tones like a les paul configuration mm -hmm. where this is a, a a neck volume a bridge volume and a master tone but pretty identical to um to an iceman this actual this particular model is uh is a new old stock guitar that we had in the warehouse from the 95 96 reunion oh, wow. when they first started and before he went with washburn so this is this is an older guitar but um the new when they come out with the new ps10 model um it's going to be identical to this they're not changing anything on it they might i think they're they're probably going to change the config conf, uh, pickup configuration to what we're currently using mm -hmm. with the with the uh, which was this one is um a custom five and a 59 in the neck 
But everything else is uh, everything else is classic Ibanez. So that's what we're going going to be rolling with next year. Very cool. Very cool. Well, that's that's about as simple as it gets. Let's can we talk about his amp rig? We can talk about his amp rig. Awesome. Okay. Okay, Francis, tell us about Paul's uh, amp rig. Okay, Paul's amp rig. Uh, these are custom angles that we have that uh, are based off the Richie Blackmore signature head, but they have a few mods and tweaks and different tubes in them than the Richie Blackmore signature head. And Angle made them specifically for us. They're, it's not a production head. Um, they put the little Paul Stanley signature yeah, and the icon very cool. on there for us. But it, like I said, it's based off the uh, Richie Blackmore, but it's got EL34s in it um, and a few little few little mods and tweaks and stuff like that. Great, great sounding heads. Angle makes, you know, great sounding heads and really reliable. I mean, we haven't had any issues with them at all. And so. what kind of cabinets are you running into? Uh, we run into Marshall 412s with vintage 30s. Hmm. Yeah. Are they vintage uh, cabs or newer? No, or? they're newer cabs with yeah. just you know vintage 30 speakers yeah. in it. We run two. We run th this head runs into a 412 uh, that's in an ISO box. Um, that way the sound's consistent every day. You know it's controlled. Get the same sound as opposed to we we run the second head uh, into a live cabinet on the stage behind the set, which you know with ambient. Can sound different every day, so yeah. you know. Um, cool. But, so uh, these between are both the two, running yep, all the time. Both running in conjunction with the Sans amp. Hmm. Um, you know, Sans amp's great. They sound great. Um, the main reason we use it, I mean, it's a safety. It's a backup. If uh, God forbid both heads were to go down, you know, we can. He'll still have sound. Front of house will still have sound. Yeah. We can we can finish a show, but uh, we use it a lot for when he flies out the front of house to do Love Gun, so there's no signal loss and slap back at front of house. You know, he's oh. he's he's got a direct signal from the sand sand. Yeah, it's immediate. Then all of that stuff. <laughs> okay, that works. Fog. Fog is rolling. It's yeah. like a it's like a it's like a Boston. Morning, with the, or in, okay. in, in California we call it June gloom. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so the signal flow starts with the Sure yep. wireless. Yep, Sure wirelesses go into the splitter, which is, I mean, it doesn't get any simpler than this, because when you're, as I said earlier, when you're that good, yep. like the great Paul Stanley, yeah. you don't need a lot of pedals and effects and stuff. You right. just, you just make it happen right here. Yeah. So. Uh, the wirelesses are going into the splitter. Uh, one, two, three, four, those are my four wireless channels. It's real easy. Uh, to the amps, the, the angle number one, which is my ISO box, angle number two, which is my live, my SANS amp. That's it. So there's literally no pedals at all? There's literally, there's no pedals, there's no effects, there's no tracks. It's all live, live, live. Man, yeah. rock and roll, that's great. This noise suppressor, are you doing anything with that? You know, I was, I did have a noise suppressor. This is new to this tour. I just got one of these. Uh -huh. um, uh, I was using a, a, a Voodoo Lab switcher for the amps and a Whirlwind thing. This eliminated all of that, and and there's so many options on this that I don't need this noise suppressor. Well. You can you can do it all with this radio. They make the best stuff, you know. Well. We obviously all use radials in, in some capacity in our rigs. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so this is new to this tour for me. I, I, I got it and uh, I couldn't be happier with it. It sounds amazing. Man, that's great. It makes everything work easier. Yeah, I love that. Just a simple... If that could be possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it could be possible, this is easier. This. That's great. But uh, yeah, most of the show is focusing on the show. You know, this gear is pretty dialed in. I've, I've, you know, had these heads for the last couple of years and they're super consistent. And uh, our sound is great, and uh, it's really about the organized chaos that goes on there for two hours, you know, for us right now. Hey, that's the six, man. All right, enjoy the show, guys. <laughs> Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.